Oh, it is I, JM. Now, apologies for the lower than usual audio visual quality. A few of you might think that I'm phoning this one in, which is literally what I am doing. We're recording this on a mobile phone. Why? Well, the video you're about to see was so exciting to shoot that myself and Anthony completely forgot to film a proper intro. However, as you can probably tell, I am now away from keyboard on a very important business retreat where I'm getting some very serious work at the end of year done preparing for the next annum, and it's going to be an exciting year. You may recently on the main channel have seen a video where I drove a McLaren 675LT. No ordinary 675LT though. This was one of the incredibly rare and stupendously valuable 675LT carbon series an incredible car and an opportunity i was granted thanks to a lovely chap called john kane who is the man behind podium place if that name is familiar you've probably seen it on scene through glass because they're the people behind his coffee anyway while i was out doing the incredibly tricky laborious and difficult bit of driving a 675 horsepower supercar i left my good friend and co-conspirator anthony behind to check out podium place and show you a few of the cars they've got on display and also a few bits behind the scenes that now should be available to some of the public as well as his thoughts on the mighty 675 lt now if you don't mind have some very very important and rather serious business administration to get to i'll see you all in the new year and this is the absolute beauty that we are filming with today 675 LT carbon series. What a stunning looking machine. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Dihedral doors, of course, that go up. We've just filmed the intro, which you will, if you've watched James's video already, you will recognize the backdrop here. James is getting what many people call B-roll. It's very tricky to be honest. It sort of depends how you can use it. This, I suppose, technically is because it's not the main footage of a sequence. It's just going to be dumped in wherever I want. So, Sort of sort of B-roll. GVs. GVs. Term, I think I'd probably use. Yeah, GVs, which stands for? General viewing. Indeed. So as James has worked in TV and film, he uses all the uh, professional technical terminology. He doesn't necessarily act professionally, but he certainly uses the right terms. Sometimes he uses some very unprofessional terms as well. <laughs> Indeed, as do we all. And sometimes you can't help it when you're in a car that really just gives you that fizz. The fizz. And it makes you say things you wouldn't otherwise normally say. Like I want a McLaren. <laughs> but it is a real privilege to be working with this car today. Since I'm a lot better behind the wheel than I am behind the camera, I'm going to get to drive this today as well. So you'll see James driving this down the road. But actually it's going to be me. And since we look so alike, I'm pretty sure no one's going to be able to tell the difference. What do you think? Twins. Practically twins. twins. Like Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Although we are at the same height, so I don't know who's Danny DeVito and who's Arnie right now. I guess it depends on which one of us can say, get to the chopper, the best. Get to the chopper. Oh, that was really good. That was really good. No. I let him go. <laughs> <We're> no. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Whenever he's fighting with people, you we're going, like you sat on something really sharp. <laughs> 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 it's more guttural. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Okay, all right, you can be Arnold. I'll have to be Danny DeVito. <laughs> now, if you've already seen James's review of the 675LT, you'd have already seen plenty of the car, but not a great deal of podium place. And after my devastating defeat at the Battle of the Arnies, I figure now is a good time to take you inside and show you around. And as soon as you walk in, you see this absolutely stunning Alfa Romeo 4C. I don't know if this is some sort of track spec, but it looks absolutely epic. It's got this incredible carbon fiber rear engine cover, this absolutely insane diffuser, massive exhaust pipes. I think if I was going to get a 4C, this is how I would want it set up. It looks like it's got some slightly wider wheels on it, an incredible splitter along the side and at the front with the canards. This is definitely a track spec car with carbon fiber bucket seats, carbon fiber wing mirrors, the carbon lights, it looks amazing. Next to that, we have this Bentley Continental GT V8S. This is actually for sale here. Now, one of the things that you'll find at Podium Place is not just cars and coffee, but cars for sale while you have your coffee. So you can pop in here, have a cup of coffee, have some food, enjoy looking at the cars. And if one takes your fancy, you can literally buy it today. A little further down here, we have the simulator with James 
and John, the proprietor, having a little conversation, wondering if they're going to beat my time on the sim because I just put the fastest time in between us. <laughs> and we have this incredible NSX. It is gorgeous. This is a 3.2 with the pop-up lights. This is the one you want. And if you're into Top Gun, this is the motorbike that is featured in the Top Gun movie with Tom Cruise. Now, something that Podium Place pride themselves on, try saying that three times really, really quickly, is the fact that they roast their own beans. They source beans from around the world, carefully selected so they get the best possible blends. They roast the coffee here themselves, and those beans are then transported around to the front where you will actually find that you can actually either buy a coffee ready to go in a bag, not just their own specific blends, but of course, Sam's seen through glass blend as well, which you can see right here. There's some really nice workstations here where you can just rock up, plug in your laptop and get a little bit of work done with your headphones on. And then when you kind of need a break, you can just turn around and see a beautiful Ferrari FF just over yonder in and around the artwork by Paul Oz, who's a British artist. And as I mentioned, the FF, I'm not a huge fan of the FF myself. I much prefer the Coupe V12s, but if you are gonna get a GT with a little bit of extra storage in the back, this has got to be the ultimate one. Also, we have the Ferrari California. And after that, we have the Lamborghini Gallardo Superleg. This is one of my son's favorite cars, Gen 1 Superleggera. Now my son, Damani, he, is a former racing driver and instructor and he said he drove a Gallardo for the first time the other day and at first he was like mm, I'm not sure but then he put it into sport mode and he said it came alive so he is actually now in love with this car all over again and next to the Gallardo we have the Aston Martin GT8 these are crazy crazy cars the aero on these is absolutely incredible so for more information on any of these cars check it out on the Podium Place website we'll leave a link in the description In case I forgot to mention it, while we were filming earlier, guess who rocked up in this GT4 RS? Sam from Seen Through Glass. This particular example looks epic. It's just definitely my cup of tea. Definitely my cup of tea. Or indeed, in this case, coffee. Yep, look who I bumped into here. It's Sam. Now, the last time I saw you, yeah. you said, I have to appear on your channel every six months, and it's been more than six that months. That was the tradition at the time. And it I, was. I've let you down. No, you haven't, no. I've been let's, busy, I apologize. Let's just blame it on traveling the world sure. and can we still blame COVID? a pandemic yeah, yeah, let's yeah i think so COVID, yeah i think so anyway great to see you what have you got with you today uh gt4 rs i mean i literally picked this up about an hour ago um i got it for the weekend i'm trying to do a bit of like a living with because every review i've seen of this car has been journalists and, and social media creators going oh it's amazing and they're on some beautiful road somewhere in beautiful weather i was like i'm just gonna use it as my daily and see what it's all about probably the worst car to do that with but <laughs> well you say that but i have a I have a particular taste in cars, which is the rawer, the better. If I can go and do my supermarket shop in a car that literally wants to shake my teeth out, yeah. that is my happy place. Yeah, I think this is going to be for you. It's really good to see you again. As always. And uh, it's good to see that your channel's also grown. Our channel's grown a little bit on sports and touring, but this today is for JM and friends. Perfect. So it's nice to have another one of his friends on the channel. Absolutely. Me and James speak all the time on Instagram. Always fun to arrange filming, never works out, and then I rock up here today and I'm like, ah, perfect. That could be a more exciting way of doing Silverstone, I think. Every lap you go around, you don't know if it's going to be the international, the national, or the club circuit. Yeah. an arrow that suddenly pops up. Maybe it could be like a bit of Mario Kart, like you basically run over a bit and it changes the track you're on, and then everyone's got to go that way. <laughs> I think this would be a genius idea, personally. I think F1 would be a lot more exciting with power-ups. I'm not the F1 expert anyway, that's the one over there. Sorry. <laughs> Sam's leaving now. We, we were like, yeah, maybe you should just set a time. And he was like, oh, is that the time? I've got to go. Oh, well, our is calling. Hey, mate, mate. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you both. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your film. Stay safe. Be in touch. Bye. See you Sunday. So now John's back on the sim because he can't. Gonna beat your time. He can't have me leaving no. the best time. No, can't have it. <laughs> John's experience on this sim won out in the end and he beat my time. And this seemed like a good moment to go on a tour of the rest of the facility, see the all new Podium Paddock Members Club and check out one particular car in John's collection that I had been dying to see.
Now among the many things that are done here at Podium Place, not just coffee, not just car sales, but also car detailing. But we're gonna go upstairs and check out the new members club, which is being launched today. Tonight is the launch party. John is gonna take us into the inner sanctum. This is the uh, members or the paddock club reception area. Paul Oz is our uh, celebrity artist who we feature a lot through Podium and the club as well. Uh, he'll be here this evening for the party, so uh, lots of people get to see him and talk to him about his art, which is good. Uh, and then on this side, uh, we started a collage of TWR, kind of uh, going back to the history of uh, Tom Walkinshaw Racing. And uh, yeah we'll progress that and uh, different videos so. yeah more, <laughs> more to come more to come yes. we go up the stairs and here we are in the members area which is basically the ultimate man cave with motorsport art coffee beans for sale a barber shop surrounded by car memorabilia and a workshop down below now we get to see behind the scenes as the final preparations are made for tonight's launch party we have obviously table football arcade machines, plenty of space to sit against the backdrop of some incredible cars including this amazing XJ220 which also belongs to John and we have a stage area here which is where the DJ is going to be for tonight and if you want to know more about the members club here at Podium Place the members club is Podium Paddock and more information will be available on their website we'll leave a link in the description below now what i really came up here to see were these incredible simulators full surround parabolic screens motion plus an immersive sound system via the headset i'm looking forward to having a go on this yeah started the company in 2008 uh, five years of straight r d we work with formula one team leading university on motion development leading to this the uh, tl series um, we've been involved in various projects for big clients like Boeing, uh, Jaguar, um, we did the Bloodhound Simulator, the world's fastest car, we did three of those. What we're specifically looking at is simulation rooms where you link multiple units together. So top of the line, fully spec, what's the retail on one of those? Our retail prices go from about £1,100 up to over £50,000. We cover every base really. Everything from just getting started in sim racing all the way up to I'm a pro racing driver and I want to win the world championship. That is an experience and a half. One, you feel completely immersed in it. I don't know, you kind of get lost in, in it as if it's more reality. When you're on the brake, you can feel the harnesses pulling you into the seat. It feels like the feeling of being thrown forward. I felt like I was able to drive that like I was driving a car on a real track and make it around the track without binning it. It was a track I'd never driven before. And normally when that happens on a sim, everything's like not quite real. So you kind of end up kind of messing up a few times when you're not used to it. But with this, I got into it, it felt like, yeah, as intuitive, almost as intuitive as actually driving a real car. Now, among the other cars that John happens to own, we have some stunning examples here, including this Aston Martin, this Techart Porsche, it's a 996. Here we have the Challenge Stradale. We have a Mustang, but the car that I really, really wanted to see for myself, because it's been a while since I've even looked at it, is this one here. This is an R8 GT. Now this is the coupe version with the full race pack, including the cage, but this has received a number of substantial upgrades. KW suspension, obviously it's got these larger wheels, this massive APR splitter, which is actually functional aerodynamically, the side splitter, the active aero rear wing. And what makes this car especially unique, it is not just a GT, it is a manual swapped GT. And as you know, I've got a GT Spider, and I was recently just discussing the merits of doing a manual swap with Ricky at RE Performance, who was the person that prepared this car. And to go with the experience of driving it as a manual, it is also supercharged. This puts out around 750 horsepower and it's manual swapped. It's gotta be a beast, surely. Where, where have you driven this? Oh, all over. The ring, spa, uh, loads of tracks around the UK. Yeah, it's been great. Drive it on the road sometimes. It's gone to VMAX. I think we did 207 or eight at VMAX, um, which was pretty decent, especially with the aero and the wing and everything. Oh, 100%, so, yeah. yeah. 
John has a stunning collection of cars and I really hope to come back someday soon and show you them all properly. However, time is short and I had work to do to help James film his signature drive-bys with the 675LT MSO Carbon Series. And that meant I was gonna be in the driver's seat. Well, I can tell you my first impressions of this car are I absolutely love it. You know, there are some cars that you get in. You think, I'm not sure if I like this. I need to drive it for longer. And then there are other cars you get in and you just like feel completely at home. And honestly, I feel completely at home in this car. The driving position is absolutely incredible. The controls are extremely intuitive. And those cracks, oh, they are. It's my kind of car. It's the right balance of class and complete hooliganry. It doesn't know if it wants to be a gentleman or an absolute yobbo. That's actually so me. You know, it looks really, really wide from the outside, but it just feels like normal. It just feels like a, a sensible, reasonable size. All right, James is done. A few more miles and two locations later, we filmed even more of James's signature drive-by shots, more of which can be seen in his review of this car over on his main channel. We'll leave a link in the description. But those few miles told me everything that I needed to know about this car. I love it. Honestly, I fell in love on its looks alone, but once I got into the driver's seat, that driving position, the steering feel, the handling and its predictability, everything about this car just made me feel completely connected to it. Now, while a Carbon Series is probably a little out of my price range, the 675LT is definitely a dream car that I one day want to own. <laughs> Now, while James is off doing the hard work of talking about the car, I'm going to enjoy my coffee. Mm. Coffee is good. It's good. <laughs>